Good. Good morning, Grace Christian Academy. So we're going to be doing personal finance here, and I'm going to try and get a video up kind of to discuss a little bit uh, about those YouTube videos that I sent out for you guys to watch. Hopefully you have watched them and taken some notes. If you haven't taken notes, then this video will help you with that because I'm going to show you some of the points that you can take away from each of those videos to possibly use that information in the essay that I've assigned you. So we're going to discuss those two things a little bit and the essay will come out in more detail towards the end of this video. So let's get started here with our personal finance class. Some notes from the first video. The stock market going down does not mean that the sky is falling. So it's important to keep in mind that even though we have fluctuations in our stock market, our economy goes up and our economy goes down, you shouldn't panic. It's not something that you should worry too much about. Definitely have reasonable concerns about things. But uh, especially with Dave Ramsey's suggestions, he is suggesting that people don't invest in things that are going to wipe themselves out if, uh, if they lose a little bit of money here and there. So he's asking for very safe investments. He's talking about investing in things that are going to be here for a long, long time. And one of the things he talks about in the video is people that uh, started to sell their socks. As soon as things started to look bad with the coronavirus coming in and the stock market went down, down, down. Well, what happens when you do that, uh, if you're interested in all in uh, what goes on with stock prices, is if you own stock in a company and you're worried that its value is going to go down so you want to sell it so that you are then not losing so much money, you're selling it at a reduced rate. So you are losing money at that point. And yeah, if you've invested in an investment that was probably not a great idea, not very stable, then the chances are you were always going to lose money on that no matter what. Dave Ramsey's suggestion is to invest in things that are going to be around for as long as America is going to be around. So when uh, we think about these things, people that are selling their stocks entirely and getting all their money out are kind of betting that America is going to fail. Uh, they're, they're saying that none of this is going to matter in a few months. Well, Dave Ramsey is an optimist in the sense that he says America is going to be around for a while. We all hope that America is going to be around for a while. It is a net positive in the world and definitely in our lives to have our country. And we especially want our country to be the way that we want it to be, full of freedom and full of God-loving people. And so we're betting that the country will succeed. And he says, just weather the storm and that'll be fine. So the next thing that you can take away from that is that it might be a little bit dark, but bad news like this is actually what drives the stock market down and it's creating an opportunity for growth. Let's say that you've never gotten involved in the stock market before, uh, but you have some money set aside, uh, some money that you weren't sure what to do with, you, you were putting it aside maybe for some time in the future, and you want to be able to use some of that to invest. Well, right now that stock prices are down is a great time to buy in a company that you know is going to regrow once this crisis is over, once we've dealt with it, that company will regrow, and that money that you invested in that company will grow into a larger amount of money you'll be able to then have a larger investment in that so that when you do decide that you want to cash out not because the sky is falling but because you've decided that it's time to have your money and use it for what you want maybe to buy a house maybe to take it into to purchase something that is a big cost item you can now take it out of the stock market so that if you put some money in and you grew it you've gained hopefully some thousands of dollars, some percentage of what you put in there before so that you have more money than if you just let your money sit around or even if you'd put it into a savings account. So it's an opportunity right now for people to actually buy stock prices, stock market uh, shares that would may have been out of reach before, may not have been such a great investment. Well, now that they're down, we know that they're going to bounce back up when these companies actually start doing better again as we recover from this coronavirus crisis. 
So the important part is that we don't panic. We don't let fear get the best of us. We don't let those little panicky moments uh, endanger us and throw us off course. I think Dave Ramsey in this video talks about how he uh, almost crashed his car in, in overcorrecting. He mentions it in one of the videos. But what we're dealing with is something where we have to try and have reasonable fear, be concerned and prepare for things that are coming. But as Christians, we also know that everything is in the hands of God. And so we, we trust in that, we don't panic, we do our best to uh, continue on uh, with our lives, helping our neighbors, helping our families, and doing the best that we can through any crisis. So again, buying on the stock market is a good thing right now. It's something that will help uh, the health of the stock market, the health of the economy, and you can benefit greatly from it yourself personally. Something that Dave Ramsey doesn't point out in the video, but I want to bring up here, is that uh, there is some news that was going around at the time that certain senators who got news of the coronavirus before it was really announced as this big thing that, uh, that we were going to be dealing with in the United States, uh, even though it was around the world, we were still kind of not prepared and not moving forward with any of the uh, implementations that we've had so far. Some senators who got wind of the fact that we were going to be moving forward knew that this would cause the stock market to diminish, and they decided to sell their stocks early to, to gain a profit because they sold it while the prices were still high, so they got a lot of money back. So something to keep in mind that uh, as someone on the stock market, you will want to buy low and sell high is the uh, typical phrase that is used if you're trying to make money on the stock market. Dave Ramsey doesn't really go for any of that. Instead, he says you buy when the price is good, and he's not talking about individual stocks and individual companies. He's talking about mutual shares. He's talking about uh, percentage growth. And you sell when you want to use your money. Now, if you are going to purchase individual stocks like this, it's, it is a good idea to, to sell when it's high, so that way you can get the best uh, profit off of it. But what these senators did is kind of a bit slimy. It's kind of a bit, well, they, they knew that something bad was going to happen in the country, and they decided that they would profit off of it. And in fact, by all of them selling their stock, that actually scared investors, other people watching those stock prices, uh, seeing that, that uh, shareholders were selling at that time, uh, actually ended up scaring them off. Uh, there's a movie that deals with, uh, with this topic. It's a funny movie from the 80s. If you haven't seen it, uh, try and get maybe an edited copy because it is rated R, I believe. But it's, it's a really funny movie called Trading Places. It's really great. It deals a lot with that kind of fear and stock market, st the stock market and prices going up and down because of that kind of fear. Uh, really hilarious movie. So ask your parents if you can watch it or if you can find an edited copy. Uh, without all the rated R stuff, the, the TV version is what I used to watch, uh, but uh, something to look into. All right, uh, next on the second video, you need to have both an abundance and both scarcity types of people in the world. So you have to be able to look at the people that, that are looking at things from both a positive and a negative perspective. Those types of people exist in the world, and you need kind of both, a balance in your own life, and you need both of those types of people in your life. Ah, here is the video where Dave Ramsey talks about overcorrecting. When you overcorrect, you can make things much worse. He tells a story about how he was almost in a crash, but he swerved to avoid crashing into a car and almost plowed off the road that when you react to something bad that's happening, you have to have an appropriate response. You have to have a reasonable response. If you respond too far in the opposite direction, you can cause yourself even more trouble than if you'd just gotten hit by the trouble coming your way. So we want to have reasonable reactions to serious problems. So what do we do in these types of situations whenever any of these things happen? What, what do we do right now during this coronavirus crisis? Well, we tighten up our budget. We stop some of the planning that we have, the debt spending or the snowball 
so that uh, we're, we're stopping making those payments uh, larger than we have to. We start making minimum payments on things so that we can save more and keep more cash on hand. Because times are tough right now, because people are out of work, because income may not be what it was before, we try and say, okay, we're, we're not focused so much on spending down our debt or, or trying to pay things off that we may have in our lives. Instead, what we have is we have a situation where we're trying to save as much money as possible. And for you guys, if you've been following the program and you didn't get into debt and a crisis comes along like this, well, what you want to do is you want to start tightening up your budget. If you were spending too much in an area, going out, going to the movies, something like that, well, we're all stuck at home in this place, so you should be spending less. Well, that's not quite the case if you're still getting deliveries, which are still out there, if you're still going to the drive through which are still out there, prices have gone up. There are some places that uh, have hoarded toilet paper, eggs, uh, milk, and uh, hand sanitizer. Prices on those things have gone up. So you want to be able to tighten your budget. You want to say, okay, what can we live on? What can we afford to do right now so that we're putting money aside? Because if someone is out of a job in your household, or if income is just reduced just because of the tight times, other people out there are spending less money. And so you, as a potential business person who has a product that you're selling to people, may be making less money. So you need to tighten up and make sure that you're not spending all of your money because you should not be spending what you were spending last month. If you are, then as income dries up, you're gonna run out of money eventually. You wanna be building your savings rather than drawing upon it to survive. In a crisis time like this, we want to tighten our budgets and make sure that we're not spending too much. So also, we don't only try to react to what's happening now, but try to be in a good position for when the crisis is over. So this is part of what Dave Ramsey is talking about. Right now is a good time to build up your emergency fund. Even though we're going through an emergency right now, this isn't what your emergency fund is for. Your emergency fund is not to try and get you through this situation. But if you are one of those people that is out of a job, then you definitely need that emergency fund, as Dave Ramsey talks about it, to where if you're going to be out of a job for several months or you're going to be not working, not create, generating income for your family for several months, then you need to rely on that. And that emergency fund needs to grow as much as possible during this time so that if you have maybe less income coming in, you want to get some of that spending out of the way. You want to make sure that you're not spending as much. You're not paying down your debt as much as you were before if you have any debt. And instead, you are trying to save that money so that you can last through and be in a good position for when we get out of this. I think it was just here on Sunday that uh, President Trump announced that we're going to be continuing these same types of uh, staying at home situations and rules in place until the end of April. So that's another month on top of what we've already had to do. That's really hard on people who are trying to work in this economy, who are trying to maintain a job or trying to get a job. Some people are going to be going on unemployment, but that's not something that could sustain everyone and not everyone will be able to get that. So now is a good time, the best time actually, to try and balance your budget to the point where you'll be in a good position to last through the crisis and be in a good position for when the crisis is over so that you can bounce back very easily. All right, on the third video, Dave Ramsey tells us that when you're panicked, you don't make good decisions, so you need to calm down. Think about what uh, what happens when or you think you're, you're talking about it in psychology class, or you may have talked about it in your psychology class, this idea of fight or flight. Uh, the fight or flight response says that you're going to make a decision in order to save your life, and you may not make the best decision ever uh, if you think that you're in a fear situation. So let's take a look at what the Bible says here. It says that even when times are tough, stay calm, Proverbs 29, 25. The fear of man lays a snare, but whoever trusts in the Lord is safe. We're resilient. The stock market will bounce back. And if it didn't, that would be the end of America. 
We don't want to bet on America failing. We don't want to bet that America is going to go away. If it did, did go away, then all of our paper money would be useless anyways. So the stock market is not something to worry about. It's not something where you want to pull all your money out of the stock market like some people did. Because if America failed, then the money that you just pulled out of the stock market is worthless anyways. Because no one's going to want that paper money. Dave Ramsey also points out that we financially recovered from September 11th in 57 days. That's almost two months. Two months later, after September 11th, uh, we were financially stable again as a country. We, we had bounced back from the dip that happened at that time. But the people who panicked, who sold everything, who, who decided to go into panic mode, did not recover. If you have a business and you decide that the sky is falling and you decide to sell your business off for, for a little bit of money that you can get during a crisis for it, then when the crisis is over, you no longer have your business. You may have some cash on hand, but it's much harder to rebuild a business after that point. So don't panic. We are going to recover for this. It will not necessarily take that long. Uh, Two months after September 11th, we were still dealing with a lot of the trauma and the shock. Psychologically, we, we were gearing up towards uh, the war that ended up happening because of September 11th. And everyone spoke about the financial crisis that had happened because of it, because the stock markets dipped hugely at that time. But we bounced back rather quickly. And we will bounce back from this more quickly than anyone seems to be talking about. In the fourth vote, uh, fourth video, there's a difference between facts and projections. And you're going to hear this a lot if you've been paying attention to the news, if you've been paying attention to uh, Donald Trump's press conferences with uh, Dr. Fauci. President Trump has been up there talking about the difference between facts and projections, and so is Dr. Fauci. There's lots of projections out there. People are talking about the death rate, but they don't know the death rate because you can't calculate that until the crisis is over. They're creating projections. They're creating models based off of what they see now to estimate what they think it might be. When in truth, that figure may be far off from what the actual death rate is. When we're talking about economic level, when we're talking about our finances, there are people that are going to lose their lives uh, and their livelihood. There's real danger going on right now. We, we have to be prepared for that. We have to mentally prepare ourselves. We have to financially prepare ourselves. We have to be safe as far as maintaining our health. But we don't need to panic. We don't need to hoard things. We don't need to go out and, and act as if the world is over because it's not. We're going to get through this and we have to be prepared uh, to, to continue living on after this is over. Uh, the economy was doing great before uh, this hit us. And as the president keeps saying, this is not an economic crisis, it's a medical one. Our economy has gone down, but that's not because the economy itself had a problem. It's in response to the medical crisis that is happening. And because of that, we have every reason to believe that our economy will bounce back to normal or even higher once this medical crisis has passed. Everyone talking about a recession, everyone saying we're going into a recession. This is always something that happens on the news where they say, are we going into a recession? Is there going to be some kind of recession going on? And a recession just means that there are two quarters, the year is split up into four quarters financially, and there are two quarters where the gross domestic product, or GDP, did not grow, meaning that it either went down or stayed stable at about the same point. That does not mean, when someone says we're in a recession, it does not mean that we are uh, in some kind of great depression, something like that, where, where the economy is horrible. A recession just means we're not better off than we were two quarters ago. We can still be in a good place, and not be better off than we were. We definitely don't want to stay in a recession. We want to keep growing. But don't let the word recession cause you fear, cause you to tremble. And finally, the stock market uh, is kind of based on emotion and confidence. And I talked about this a little bit earlier, uh, and especially with that movie 
in trading places, the idea is, is that everyone trading on the stock market is kind of watching the bottom line and watching who's selling what for how much. And there can be, uh, imagine a flock of birds sitting on, on a ledge there. If you walk up to the birds and you make a big noise, they're all going to jump and fly off. And that's kind of the way stock market investors are. If there's a big noise, there's a big panic, they fly off. They start selling stocks in abundance and the stock market goes down. As soon as things settles down, as soon as there's confidence in the system, they start buying everything back up and it builds back up. This is just the way the stock market works. That's part of the reason that Dave Ramsey says to invest in stable uh, areas, in the S&P 500, things that generally just continue to grow at a slow and steady rate, rather than investing in something that could be disappear in a second because there was a strike of panic or a strike of fear. Next, on to the fifth video. There are going to be times in your life that there are things happening to you out of your control, out of anyone's control. Uh, they always come up, and it always seems to come one right after the other. But even when you think you have things in control, there are things happening that are going to be out of your control. So you need to understand that you can't control everything. There are crises that are going to happen in the world. There are things that are going to happen in your life that you simply can't stop, you, you can't prepare for. This is part of what your emergency fund is for. Uh, these types of things are when something happens, when your car breaks down, when something breaks at your house. You weren't in control of that. You didn't cause it to happen. Something just happened. And if you allow things to just keep happening to you without any sort of preparation, then it will always feel like life is holding you down and you're constantly just pushing a big rock up a hill and it's rolling back down on top of you. If instead you prepare for these things, you have money set aside for these emergency situations, then it can carry you through those things that you can't control in your life so that things are more stable. It does not feel so difficult. Um, the other aspect of that is that we often worry about things that will never happen. In fact, the things we worry about most are the things that never come to pass. Uh, we're sitting around worrying about how many people are going to die, how many people are, are uh, going to be affected by the coronavirus, and we simply don't know. But the, the numbers that are coming out, some are really scary and others look pretty normal if you compare them to things like the flu epidemic. Now, that doesn't mean that we should either get really scared or not take it seriously. It just means, why are we going to worry about it so much? We need to plan, prepare, be safe, but don't let worry get us down. Look at how the restaurants here in the Valley are reacting. A few of them have closed. Well, that hurts their employees who need that paycheck, and that hurts the business in the long run if they're not making money and they still have to pay rent on their building, electricity, all of those things. Then those bills add up, and many of those places that have shut down will not be able to open up again. Uh, other places, many of them, have started delivering and started drive through to try and stay open and to keep their people employed. That's a good thing. We need to support local businesses, especially during a time like this. So if you have a choice between, uh, if, you, if you're going to go and get a national chain, uh, McDonald's or, or Pizza Hut, which is not terrible because their franchises, they're locally owned as well. Uh, but even better than that would be to support a, a local place that's, that's owned by someone who lives here. Uh, all their employees definitely live here. All that money is staying here in this community. You want to keep them alive and thriving, so go by their drive through sometime if you're going to pick up some food during this time. Uh, we can stay safe and try to keep our livelihoods at the same time. We can try and keep our communities thriving. If you've been hurt by the coronavirus, if something going on right now is uh, causing you to have lost income, someone in your family maybe out of a job, 
uh, the important thing is to try and get some income, try and find a part-time job. I know a lot of people that have started becoming uh, deliverers for Faber and Uber. Faber and Uber are delivering food every now and then. A lot of people have moved uh, uh, over towards delivering for Walmart because they're still delivering uh, packages to homes uh, and doing curbside. So a, a lot of people have put up their services and saying, okay, I have a car, let me, let me get some income right now delivering packages to people, get, getting stuff to their doorstep from the, the restaurant uh, to them. So that's one of the things that is going on in the nation right now. Those businesses are making more money than they ever have before because everyone who is not at home cooking, which you should all be doing as well, uh, is getting delivery right now. So that's that's something that uh, that's a business that is definitely taking off. Dave Ramsey has a list of things that we need to focus on financially that, that, that are important to get through this time. And it's kind of like a checklist of things uh, that, that are necessary to keep your, your household safe and running. You need to take care of food, make sure that everyone's eaten, no one's starving. You need to take care of your shelter. If you have holes in the roof, if you have the floor is falling out from underneath you, that's no good. You, you need to make sure that your home is good. Take care of your utilities, your water, your gas, your electricity. If these things go out, then it can cause major problems for you as you're stuck at home. And your transportation. Even though we're stuck at home most of the time, we're not like one of those big cities where they're basically locking themselves uh, into their homes completely. You can still go out so long as you maintain social distancing. You can't uh, you can't just uh, go anywhere that you want and, and uh, do things without any sort of repercussions. But transportation is important. I was just talking about Uber and Favor and things like that. But also just getting from place to place when things need to be done. I know me and my wife, we're still checking on other family members. We went to, to visit her grandfather just recently, making sure that he's all right. Uh, we're, we're taking care of our animals, getting into the, the vet's office and things like that. A lot of people are doing the same. You need transportation to be able to do that. So it's food, shelter, utilities, and transportation. You need to keep those things maintained. Focus your efforts on those things so that we can continue to survive through this crisis. The sixth video note, okay, anxiety is like a fire alarm and fear is seeing a real fire. So anxiety is that feeling that you get that, that like kind of like, oh, uh, I, I, I don't know what to do sort of feeling. I, I, I have no sense of what the right choice is sort of feeling. If you are afraid because of something that might happen, you have anxiety, fear is seeing a real fire. This is the, the difference that Dave Ramsey sees here, is that anxiety is just a feeling that, that something bad might happen, even if there's indication that there might be something bad, like, like a fire alarm. But fear is knowing that there is a real fire there, and you have to deal with the real fire, as opposed to a fire alarm, which might be going off, uh, and there may not be a fire there. So there's good fear, and there's bad fear. Uh, you need to be able to be afraid of things, like if a bear is running after you, that, that's, that's good f that you're afraid of that. Bad fear is focusing on things that you can't do anything about, which we talked about, and being afraid of something that you're not sure is even going to happen. Uh, something that will cause you to overcorrect, something that will cause you to uh, worry and sell everything that you own because you're afraid that the sky is falling and the world is ending. Don't go into the bad fear territory. Dave Ramsey is talking about how panic and calm are both contagious. When everyone is panicking around you, it's going to cause you to panic. If you're panicking around a group of people, that's probably going to cause some more people in that group to panic. But calm is also contagious. If you keep your head about you, if you stay cool and collected, you make good decisions, don't let panic overtake you, which is what you want personally anyways, chances are you will help keep other people in your family or other people around you calm as well. So it's good to focus on being calm and not letting ourselves get panicked. 
there are people in the world that are trying to sell you fear right now. Right now, there are people, every headline that you read in the news and politics is all about the negative, all about the possibility of death, how many people are going to die, what uh, the president is doing wrong, how we did everything too late, most of which is over-exaggerated or not true at all, but people don't buy newspapers, well, people don't buy newspapers at all anymore, but people don't click on headlines that say everything's fine. If you see a headline that says, oh, news inside tells you about how things are going horribly wrong, read more, click here to read more, you're going to get more clicks on that. And so these people are making money off of the fear that they are instilling within people. They're driving fear and panic throughout the nation, causing people to make bad choices. I don't know why one of those bad choices is hoarding toilet paper, but it is one of those things that is going on. So people are hoarding toilet paper, people are hoarding hand sanitizer, people are hoarding other stuff. Uh, earlier in the day, we heard about a, a grocery store that just got a new shipment of milk in, so we calmly went over there and we bought ourselves enough milk uh, for the week. Other people were going in and buying way more milk than they needed, and that milk is going to go bad. It's going to sour, and it's not going to do anyone any good. Um, all right, here is where I should have brought up the fear and uh, response in psychology. Uh, we're still talking about fear. The flight and fight response is something that is real. Uh, when, when you're feeling fear, you either want to punch out at something, you want to lash out at something, or you, run a, want, or you want to run away from it. You need to be in control of that response. Even though fight or flight is a good thing to have in the right situation, you want to be able to defend yourself. You want to be able to get yourself out of a bad situation. You can't be controlled by your fear. Panicking is the worst thing that you can do in a bad situation. Most of the people in the country are panicking right now. And others are ignoring and dismissing everything. If you've checked YouTube at all, there are videos of people who went on spring break vacation saying things like, oh, if I get coronavirus, I get coronavirus. Doesn't matter to me, man. I want to party. Not exactly the most brilliant of minds there. Uh, none of you wants to get sick with this. Uh, there is a chance that, that it could be lethal. It's not only in people that are over 80, that it's been lethal. Uh, but it's a small chance. It's something that you want to take seriously, but not panic about. Uh, so both of these responses, panicking and dismissing it, are the wrong response. Because there is a real problem. We can help ourselves and we can help others with reasonable responses. Okay, so... Some questions to think about for writing your essay. The first video starts early in the crisis, and it progresses over several days. Each of the videos is further and further as we progress in the crisis, so do the videos, over several days. So how does Dave's reaction to the threat change as it becomes more tangible, as it becomes more real? What does his attitude change? How does his attitude change, and how does it stay the same? Are the recommendations that he's making at the start different than the ones he's making at the end, or are they the same? And has his general attitude towards it changed? Is he taking it more seriously or less seriously by the end? Next, what are some of the basic steps that Dave recommends to everyone dealing with a financial problem during a crisis? So these are basic steps, not just for the coronavirus, but things that we can apply to any crisis in our lives that will come up, and they will come up. And then how can we learn from what's going on now and prepare for things that are out of our control in the future? These are things, little details that you should be able to put into your essay, be able to put into what you're writing there. What I want in your essay is I want you to be able to talk about what's going on and how it's affected you personally, how Dave Ramsey's advice applies to you, or how it applies to someone that you know or someone in your family. You don't have to get too personal. You don't have to share any information that you don't want to share. But just talk a little bit about what's going on with the coronavirus and uh, how Dave Ramsey's information seems good to you. Or if you have a criticism, write that into the essay as well. If you think that he's wrong about something, write that in there. 
the essay requirement specifically, the essay needs to be 1,000 words. It needs to be double spaced. The introductory section and thesis should be 100 to 300 words. So that's the introductory paragraph should be one paragraph, 100 to 300 words. The body of the essay should be three paragraphs and it should be 500 to 750 words. The conclusion should be one paragraph and it should be 50 to 250 words. So this will result in a five paragraph essay uh, and if any of you have written these before, then you'll know kind of how they go. If you need to check out the word count, you should be able to highlight the words either in, uh, in whatever word program that you're using and be able to get the program to count out the words for you so that you don't have to sit there going one, two, three, four. It should be able to tell you how many words are in each section just when you highlight them, or it should tell you overall how many are in there. Uh, Evidence. In this type of essay, uh, the type of evidence we'll be using is things that are mentioned in the videos that we've watched and the article that I sent to you, uh, or any other articles that we that you may read out there. If you're reading stuff about the coronavirus and you want to add information from it, that's great. Just make sure that you actually cite what you're reading. Uh, so reference the videos that we've watched, reference articles that you've read. Any outside information, go ahead and put that in. Just cite the source. Uh, so how is the crisis affecting you and your family around you? Remember that that's the main topic of the paper. So an example of how to write an essay. We're going to talk about the Jane Schaefer model. I'm recommending this model of uh, writing your essay to help you write it. This is a structure that you can use in order to write your essay to make it easier for you. Now, it looks like a lot of words on the page, and it may be like, oh, man, I, I just want to sit down and write. I just want to type it out. Trust me, if you have a structure set out for you, it will write itself. Any essay, not just this one, but any essay in the future, if you follow a structure like this one or others that are out there, you don't have to even think about your topic that much. You don't have to think about your essay as much because you're just following these instructions here. So the Jane Schaefer essay format begins with the introductory paragraph, and it has a hook, something that is meant to draw the reader in to make them want to keep reading. It can be a definition, a phrase, a quote from a recognizable source, one to three sentence story, etc. So it's uh, Jane Schaefer, the model, is mostly dealing with responses to reading and literature, but it applies to all sorts of things, including the topic that we're dealing with today, you can just introduce your your topic, your thesis in the introduction, and then talk about why it's important to you, and that's enough to draw in your audience. So here it says author, book, and title. Remember, the novels are the only thing that are underlined in all pieces uh, are put in quotations. So we're not going to be quoting authors and book and title in here, but what we are doing is we're going to be talking about Dave Ramsey's advice on this and you don't need to underline Dave Ramsey or anything like that but this is just a, a note to mention we're talking in your introduction about Dave Ramsey's advice uh, for the coronavirus crisis. So the thesis or the backbone of the paper states the position on a topic that can be proved in the paper. Make sure this topic is narrow enough to be upheld with the facts in the following paragraphs. So the thesis can just simply be how the coronavirus is affecting you and what you think Dave Ramsey has to say on it. Uh, put that in your own words, make it sound nice. That's the thesis statement for your essay there. If you have something specific that you want it to say, you can change it to be that way. Remember when we're turning in our rough drafts, uh, you can ask me any questions that you want and I'll give you some feedback if you want uh, my advice on what you can change or what you can beef up a little bit. So the body paragraphs, these are three paragraphs within there and this structure will govern each of the paragraphs in there. Uh, this is the part that will help the most. This is a section that I think you can take and use on any essay or anything that you write basically and be able to make it much more cohesive and much more uh, much more uh, interesting writing. You start with a topic sentence, uh, states the subject that will be discussed in the paragraph, more detailed or narrower statements like the thesis. So this can be as simple as a conclusion that you've drawn. If you want to be able to say, 
the coronavirus has affected businesses in the valley. That can be your topic sentence for the first paragraph. Then you have one concrete detail, and it's a fact-oriented or something paraphrased uh, from the piece which you're writing. So cite the source if directly quoted. So here you can take something that Dave Ramsey said, and you can write it there. Or you can take something like uh, talking specifically at about a business or talking specifically about something that happened in your family. That can be your concrete detail, number one, about how things are going with the coronavirus. The commentary details comments on the importance of the concrete detail on the concrete details. So this will be some supporting evidence, something to support the concrete detail. Something like you can you can quote something from Dave Ramsey again. You can take something that will then be like, okay, so I'm talking about a specific business here in the valley, and here is something that happened with that business uh, that that supports the idea that I expressed in my concrete detail. Commentary number two, same as commentary number one. It's two statements, two lines, two sentences that will support this concrete detail, which will explain, support. Uh, this is usually where evidence goes in. You, you will then explain what this uh, concrete detail is in these commentaries. So that follows each of these, each of these commentary uh Concrete detail number two, you, you then have another point that's being made. It says fact or a quoted piece from the writing. We're not following a piece of writing, but this can be a main point here. So concrete detail number one, main point. Commentary one, supporting point, supporting point, main point, supporting point, supporting point. Then there, So there are three of them. You do that three times, and then you have a concluding sentence that wraps up the thoughts in the paragraph. This right here governs one paragraph. You'll end up with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 sentences in each paragraph. And if you do that, if you follow this model, then your essay will basically already be written for you. So long as you start, you come up with major point, come up with another major point, come up with a third major point, and then find some supporting detail to throw in about each of those major points. Have your topic sentence and your concluding sentence, which basically state the same thing, but just in slightly different ways. Then you have an entire paragraph pretty much already written for you. Again, this isn't just for this essay. This can work on any sort of essay. So this will be one paragraph. Second paragraph, you do the exact same thing, but now you have three new points you find some uh, commentary, some supporting details for each of those, and so on and so forth. You do that three times for each paragraph, and you will be able to get to the conclusion, which wraps up the topic of the paper. So we've already talked about all of that, and that's basically how that goes. If you have any questions about how to do this, about what you're doing, uh, or anything that's going on with any of the videos that we've talked about, please email me, please get a hold of me. Uh, I hope that you all are doing well. I hope that everything is going all right in your houses right now and that everyone is being safe. Uh, this is it for our lecture for today. If you have any questions, please get a hold of me. And God bless you all. Hopefully see you soon.